I heard say once from an old man that whenever you hear a noise in the forest, if you don't know what it is, at least suspect that it might be a raven. I'm at the Wells Dump where there's lots of ravens here and they're all singing different, saying different things. They have very unique language. Have a listen. Ravens from different regions have their own dialect. This is really complicated about their uh, language. Some say they can make up to 10,000 different sounds and I've heard them making sounds and clunkings and strange noise. You're in the forest and you just have no idea. What was that sound? That was the weirdest thing I've heard. Well, I gave a raven call out and sure enough, a raven showed up. The thing is too, when you call to them, because you can't imitate their dialect here, they will know you're an outsider. They might not recognize you right away as a raven, but they'll hear that and they'll wonder. So I often call to them and they'll come to me and check me out because they're uh, somewhat territorial. <clears throat> Who are you? Why don't you speak our language? I don't know what I'm saying to them. And now they're all coming to check me out. All curious, who's this guy? He's black like a raven, but he doesn't look like us. He doesn't quite sound like us either. Hi guys. Can I come down and see me? Something I think is kind of funny is that people uh, think that ravens and crows are sort of they can't really tell the difference between them and I sure can right away. Uh, one thing that I'll say for sure is the two don't like to hang out together. The uh, crows have the run of wells and you rarely see a raven in wells, which is just uh, two and a half kilometers up the road, not even. Then you have uh, all the ravens are here at the dump and I've seen a crow try to come around and uh, get the chase put on them pretty quickly. So the, uh, the two colonies the two different murders, one of crows and one of ravens in this uh, little valley here, they don't hang out. They avoid each other. And the ravens uh, seem to like the, the dumpster. My guess is the ravens are smart enough and tough enough uh, and have numbers that if they wanted the run of wells, they would take it, but they don't. For the amount of them, they just like to hang out in this little spot. And, uh, Yeah, they're very interesting creatures. Very smart birds. A crow is kind of a dummy compared to a raven. And you think your your dog's really smart, but a raven can outthink a dog just like that. There's that extra level of uh, problem solving and self-awareness that ravens seem to have. The ravens too, if uh, they come across One's flying around, he comes across a big dead moose. He'll come down, have a couple bites to eat, then he'll bugger off and uh, come back an hour later with a whole bunch of ravens. So uh, they have enough language and enough common sense that he can say, whatever you're doing, drop it, come with me right now. They understand that and they show up en masse. However, it's also been observed that if the raven flies over, uh, say, something small and dead, and he's got a couple with them and maybe he notices it, but the other crows or ravens in his uh, mitts don't. He'll wait until they kind of bugger off, then he'll go down, sneak in and feed himself and try not to bring attention to it. So they're smart enough to recognize that when there's a lot, there's no reason not to share. And I think that's uh, really cool about the raven. In the animal kingdom, uh, they do uh, see a benefit because when the next one finds something big he'll go and tell them hey drop what you're doing i got this i'm the good guy today he's mr popular
generally crows and ravens do roost in a crew whole bunch of them together a murder they call that my first full day in Vancouver I looked up at sundown and seen thousands of crows flying some direction out eastward and I said to it took me three months before someone gave me an answer that there was a park in Burnaby by Lake Burnaby that they all lived in. Thousands of them. I kept saying, where are the crows going at night? And people said, whoa, what do you mean? And I guess city folk. I mean, what was obvious to me in day one, there's a, a big colony of crows in this city. And I'm sure if you go to where they live and start digging around their nest, you're going to find all kinds of silvery, shiny, fun things. They do have that way of They do have that way of collecting things. So I dropped this tree and I'm glad I didn't film it because it was an entire mess around. The branches of the spruce were all caught up in the limbs of this big guy here who is dead and I will come take him. Trees like that, though, I could probably wait till uh, till spring break up and the loggers aren't going up and down the road here. Get a logging truck stuck with a big spruce across the road. Not very nice. Once the roads get soft in a couple weeks, they won't be working. I can come here and drop any tree I want without bothering them whatsoever. They never minded me, but I also have respect. I do drop trees on roads, even main roads. And I always try to time it intelligently as best I can. We do have a crow that lives near my house who's tame. Robert, my neighbor, uh, rescued him during a thunderstorm when he was just a chick. He fell out of his nest, was blown out of his nest on July 1st, 2013. Aggressive thunderstorm. Severe storm. So Robert raised him and he's been a great bird. Now he's wild again, but he'll hang out at our house and uh, we feed him sometimes. Charlie. You can talk to him and he's not scared of people. He keeps his distance. He's always eating at Norma's on her deck. She feeds him at the B&E Mercantile. B&C, B&E. Don't be any at the B&C. Crows and ravens love to harass other animals. A uh, great example is there used to be an eagle nest near my house in Vancouver by the P&E. And that friggin' bunch of crows would relentlessly harass them eagles. You'd think the eagle's the king of the Canadian wilderness, but no. They're just an over-glorified seagull. And the ravens uh, put the run on them. So we've, I found a dead chick once. The ravens got in the nest and the buggers. Beautiful eagle chick. I called the city and told them and that was that. I remember in Vancouver walking down the street by my house on 15th and Clark. And then I heard a pair of crows cawing at something. I knew they were cawing at something. They weren't just sitting there cawing. People think they just sit there and caw. They don't. There was, so uh, I went over and peeked into the yard and there was a raccoon trying to hide from these two birds that everywhere he went just followed him and pecked on him, eh? Buggers that way. And this pair was living in my house, living in the tree next to my house. They decided to make war on us because they had eggs, babies or whatever. And those friggin' ravens or crows would uh, attack my cat all day long and attack me and I got sick of it pretty quickly because I'm a country boy so I had a couple slingshots I left them by the different doors and windows had a couple rocks and blocks of wood so every entrance to the house and exit and every window that could open if I seen him out there I'd open the window and take a shot with my after about three days of this I come walking up the street one day off the city bus and I seen that same pair of crows and they seen me in my green hat I was wearing an army hat at the time and uh, they flew off con. Ah, it's him. I sat on my porch, not being bothered, drinking a beer and having a smoke and thought, right on. And then I watched the neighbor come out of his house and them two crows were just on him as bad as anything. So all they figured out was don't bother that guy because, uh, you know, they do recognize you. Such cool birds. Also in the Corvid family, is the Blue Jay, Gray Jay, Stellar Jay, Cardinals, uh, some others like that. Uh, the Magpie. 
big family of intelligent birds. They're all very intelligent and they're all known as jerks too. Blue Jays and Stellar Jays especially are real jerks. They'll just pick on anything. I call them the tattletales of the forest and the crows and ravens too because uh, they'll tell on you. And what I mean by that is if you're out in the bush and you hear the birds making a fuss, squirrels and chipmunks too are good for this. You hear them making a fuss, you know that uh, something's disturbing them and if it's not you, then you can start making educated guesses based on the sort of wildlife you regularly encounter, what it is that might be disturbing them. Sometimes they're not disturbed by very much, you know, a porcupine in their tree or something can be enough to get them going sometimes. But, uh, oh. Nonetheless, there's been times, and I do mean uh, not one, two, or five, or ten. I mean, frequently I've uh, known well ahead who's in the forest with me, be they bears or moose or things like that, because the tattletale animals, they tattletale on you. If it's not you they're tattletaling on, they're telling you someone else is there. You know, big animals like moose and grizzly bears, they can't go walking through the forest without animals shouting out their presence. So when people tend to think that, uh, you know, often they'll say like, oh, and suddenly we came across this bear. And, you know, meanwhile, the animals have been telling you there was scratches on the trees. There was shit back there. There was footprints. There was, you know, there's, you've seen signs and you didn't know how to interpret them maybe. And then you found yourself face to face with a grizzly bear. Who all the squirrels and jays and crows and chipmunks and everybody were trying to tell you. He's here! Brrr! The chipmunks are famous for it. I uh, tracked a cougar coming downhill. My uh, guys on my fire crew, my ITF fire crew, uh, scared him. And he went flying down the canyon. Down to uh, where I was. It was a big deep canyon. So uh, it's quite a distance from the guys, about 30 hose lengths or something like that. Uh, each hose length being 100 feet, so that can give you an idea. Uh, or 50 feet, sorry. And uh, as that cougar came down the canyon, I mean, they're telling it on the radio, like, ah, there's a cougar. Or we just scared it down the canyon and the incident commander's like, oh yeah, he's probably just lost. And I'm sitting down there like, cougars don't get lost, you fool. You know, I know you don't believe that. You're just saying that. So, uh, but I could hear him all the way down the hill. Three different chipmunks told me his position and he passed about 100, 150, maybe 200 feet up on this little ridge and down from me. He didn't come towards me. But uh, from there on in for the rest of the day, I did make sure uh, to not put myself into ambush points. So ambush points being uh, uh, heavy tree cover that you can't see what's in them, or uh, cliffs and things like that, that something can jump down from you that you can't necessarily see is up there. So I avoided that kind of terrain and stayed in open spaces and just kept my wits about me. I'm not really scared of a cat. Uh, typically they're not going to attack a guy, you know, he wasn't lost. He was scouting out the situation to see if any easy meals are hanging around but then he's seen uh probably first seen manny our crew boss who was uh 300 pounds and 260 pounds and six foot five or something manny canoris and then uh tyson stump at that point uh, rest in peace tyson he was uh a very large person at that time and uh then ricky was a very large guy too i mean that's why i was down in the canyon everyone in our crew was large except for me and rodka so i'm sure that cougar looked at them and thought ah no way man that's that's not an easy meal and that's how it really is right and that's why you got to watch your children in cougar country and things like that have a couple dogs around that's literally all it takes a couple dogs will treat a cougar they're not that tough you know they you put the run on certain animals and they'll run because they're they're sneaky, stocky, stealthy jerks. They're not out to uh, just go fighting around. Too dangerous. Anyways, I'm home. I got some wood. Now the house will get warm again. 
probably shouldn't have waited till the very end. I threw the chain off the saw and I was terrified at first. Like, oh no, what if I bent the bar in or one of the teeth is bent and I gotta file it down. Do I have everything with me? But no, the chain went right back in, no problem. It's good. But I, trying to get that snag out, I had it saw pinched a little bit at times. So that's the kind of thing that might happen when you are screwing around. Ah! I found it and I can't get up. Pop, pop goes the weasel, the weasel. Pop goes the weasel because the weasel goes pop. You go. Want to go out? Go on. Well, that's the end of me for today, folks. We'll see you tomorrow with all kinds of other mountain man bullshit that comes to my mind. Boo! See you next time.